Hello everyone and welcome to Mechanics Grade 11 and we're going to be looking at Newton's laws for this video, okay? But before we uh, have a look at Newton's laws, we need to look at a few components of Newton's laws so we are able to answer Newton's laws questions. Okay, so first of all, we're going to go and look at what is a force, okay? Because force is wildly uh, dealt with in uh, Newton's laws. Okay, so it's important that we first uncover what it is so that we know what we're dealing with. So again, what is a force? A force is anything that can cause a change to objects. Alright, so forces can do things like change the shape of an object, accelerate or stop an object, and change the direction of a moving object. We can classify a force as a contact force or a non-contact force. So what are contact forces? The name suggests it all. So a contact force must touch or be in touch with an object to cause a change. All right, uh, examples all right, of contact forces, uh, the force that is used to push or pull things, so like open a door or closing a door, or the force of the wind to turn a windmill, believe it or not, is in fact a contact force. The wind needs to come into contact with the windmill in order for the windmill to uh, turn. Now, what are non-contact forces? A non-contact force does not need to touch an object to cause a change. And the most common one to understand is magnetism. All right? Magnetism, like a magnet pulling a paperclip towards itself, right? the magnet did not make contact with the paperclip, it just pulled the, the paperclip towards itself. Gravity, the Earth pulling the moon towards itself. All right? Believe it or not, the Earth does um, actually um, put a gravitational force on the moon, all right? There is a pull there. That's why the moon is so close to the Earth, or seems so close to us in the sky, because of the Earth's gravitational force that it exerts on the moon. All right, now, the forces that we're going to have a look at now, after uh, contact and not contact forces, okay? Uh, the forces we're going to have a look at now deal specifically with Newton's laws, okay? So the normal force, okay, which is denoted by a capital N, right? This is the force that is exerted by a surface on an object that it is in contact with. So for example, I have a table, all right? And I have a little ball on the table, all right? There we go. This is my normal force, okay? And I've noted it with a F for force, an N for normal. All right, I'm telling you and everyone else that reads it that that is the normal force. Okay, something that we must remember with regards to the normal force is that the normal force is always perpendicular, right? That means it's always at a right angle to the surface. Okay, so in the diagram on the following slide, all right, pay attention to the second diagram for me. All right, now, even though the table there is tilted, all right, the table there is tilted on its side, okay, and uh, let's use the block as, in the, as the example suggests, okay. Now, when the table was like the table with the ball on top of it, all right, there was the block, and the normal force, okay, or Fn, was... There we go, it is still perpendicular, all right, to the surface, right angle. Now, just because the table is tilted, the normal force tilts with the object, okay? The normal force tilts with the object, because now this is still at a right angle, all right? The normal force now does not become over here, because that's not a right angle there, that's not a right angle there, that's an obtuse angle. That's greater than 90. So the normal force cannot be the dotted line. Okay? This cannot be the normal force. This is the normal force over here. Okay. Right? So important, it is always 
All right, the normal force is always perpendicular at a right angle to the surface. Right, now we're going to have a look at frictional force now. now Frictional force, okay, we've heard this term being thrown around in the English language, all right, for uh, different things. Okay, now we're actually going to discover what it actually is. So, the frictional force is the force that opposes the motion of an object in contact with a surface, and it acts parallel to the surface the object is in contact with, okay? Okay, so the magnitude of the frictional force all right, depends on the surface and the magnitude of the normal force. Okay, so frictional force therefore is directly proportional to the magnitude of the force or, or of the normal force. All right, so this is how we'd write it. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to denote frictional force as capital F with a little wavy F like this, or sort of like a cursive F, almost, right? This is my frictional force. Now, in other papers and in other textbooks, uh, sometimes um, frictional force is denoted by F, F, capital R, all right? Also, for the frictional force, all right? Now, I do not mind uh, what you denote your frictional force as, as long as I know what you are trying to tell me. However, uh, me as the tutor, I will be using this one, all right? F with the wavy F as my frictional force denotation, okay? So it is directly proportional to the normal force, so the force of friction, the frictional force is directly proportional to the normal force. All right, great stuff. All right, great. Now, for every surface, we can determine a constant factor. All right, we can determine a constant factor for every surface. That allows us to calculate what the frictional force would be if we know the magnitude of the normal force. Okay, now we have two types of friction that we deal with, known as static friction and kinetic friction. We know, let me just get a clean little board here, that what static means, right? Okay, so just to reiterate, static, all right, means standing still. It's not moving, it's standing still. Now we know what kinetic means too, right? All right, kinetic means moving, all right? It's moving or uh, there is motion taking place. Perfect. So, we know that static friction and kinetic friction have different magnitudes, so we have different coefficients for the two types of friction. All right, so we denote for the coefficient of static friction, we, as the slide suggests, mu s. All right, this is mu, all right, not u, it's mu s is static friction. Woo, excellent. And then we have mu k, right, for the coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay, perfect. Now, those are uh, our uh, coefficient all right, variables. Okay, so we have two formulae actually for denoting, all right, or to be able to work out the maximum uh, frictional forces for uh, static friction and uh, kinetic friction. Okay, stay tuned for the next video where I will be going through some worked examples for static and kinetic friction.